But the key thing for me is to decide on what I'm going to wear, forget about it, and get on with the real job, which is the job of a journalist. The older I've got, the freer I feel to be exactly how I want to be. People that have known me all my life know I'm a complete tag hag. Before, I think, you know, it would always be felt that that, you know, made me too um, frivolous. But then I think, my God, you know, the whole point about fashion is there's a massive industry in this country. You know, embrace it. The preparation for the Margaret Thatcher interview uh, that I uh, conducted was incredibly thorough. Uh, she really didn't like being interviewed by women. She'd rarely been interviewed uh, by a woman. And when Downing Street heard that on her trip to Scotland, I was going to do it, they tried to get it stopped. Preparation for the interview began, and of course the key things were getting the journalism right. And then we thought, and I thought, what I have to think about then is what the interview looks like, how it will be conducted, how it will feel doing this interview. I had to feel that I was sort of in charge. And to do that, I had to feel that I had dressed properly and simply and cleanly and brightly. And so I chose, albeit in a Manny jacket, but I chose one that was a bit more casual, but also was very light. And by contrast, Margaret Thatcher was dressed very fussily. And I think that contrast did, it did make me feel comfortable. And so, uh, you know, once you feel comfortable, you can do the interview. My father often wore hats, this brown fedora in particular. I particularly love this one, and I love it because it fits me and I can still wear it. It feels great and it's, you know, it's, it's just got a great shape to it. My Aunt Anna uh, never had kids of her own. And I used to stay with her quite a lot. And she had the most beautiful dressing table with all sorts of lovely perfume jars on it and jewellery boxes. But her engagement ring was something incredibly special. And I'm sure I wasn't really bratty about this because I can remember always saying, I love this ring. And she always said, well, you know, you'll have it one day. And very sadly, when she, she died, my uncle sent me the ring. It's the most beautiful sapphire and diamond ring. And it always makes me think of her. The Aran sweater symbolizes my childhood. I had a number of Aran sweaters, but each Aran sweater tells a different story. The way the knit is the same as is in Scotland, the stories are told in Fair Isle sweaters. I love the texture when you got them and they were brand new and they smelled fantastic. And they weren't mass produced at all. They were produced in villages by women. And this one I still love because I got it when I was nine or 10, and, uh, or even younger actually. And I still wear it and I wear it with big baggy jeans. And I have a photograph um, of myself and my brother, and I think actually my mum, in Aran sweaters on a beach in Connemara. I was making a, a film for BBC in Paris. And one of the people that was showing me around was Ines de la Frazange, and of course she was one of Chanel's early muses. But she is also a, a muse for Roger Vivier, and he has the most beautiful store in Paris. And when I saw those shoes, and we actually were using a little bit of the footage, I think, of the um, Catherine Deneuve Belle de Jour film. And of course, these are the shoes that she wears in that film. And so I had to buy a pair, which were absolutely hellish to break in. But ever since then have been fantastic, because you can wear them with jeans, you can wear them to work, and you can wear them at night. These are kind of my fairy tale shoes, because I love the fact that they are quite sharp and pointy, but they have this incredible Swarovski uh, studs all over them. But the best thing about them is that they are from day one wearable. You know, there's no breaking in of these shoes. But the wedding shoes say a bit about me because the wedding shoes were handmade by Jessica Mock and were much more expensive than my wedding dress. And my wedding dress was chosen so that it would be above ankle length so that I would show off the shoes. I talked to Jessica Mock about the dress and she designed the shoes in the absolute fabric of the dress but with a little rose at the back. She also put a bit of fun in them. I wanted a bit of sequins, I wanted some pearls and she'd put some extra stitching in them and actually they're kind of Marie Antoinette shoes I think. They're like that, they're kind of, you know, when I think of Coppola's film about Marie Antoinette I think I could have actually given her those shoes. I'm a big Bella Freud fan, I think she's incredibly talented. The Fairy Tale of New York is probably one of my favourite ones that I have because I'm a Kirsty McCall fan and I wear that every Christmas. So it is absolutely my Christmas jumper.